Reflections from Torch Trust, focusing on Christian faith and sight loss. Hello and a very warm welcome to Reflections, the show from Torch Trust that focuses on faith and disability in today's world. I'm Marilyn Baker and I'll be with you for the next half hour. Now, how do you pray? That might seem like a rather strange question, mightn't it? After all, do we often give a lot of thought to how we pray, or do we just put our heads down and get to it? Well, Lynn Davis is here with us to explore a very interesting style of prayer. More on that in a few minutes, but first, we're going to kick off with our thought for the week. And as this is the second Sunday in Advent, we thought we'd share this thought on Advent Candles with you, written by our producer, Grace Dawson. We are now in the season of Advent. One of my favourite parts of this time of year is the weekly lighting of Advent Candles at church. It's a very simple moment, so perhaps it sounds strange that I'm such a fan of it. But there is something wonderful about that old, understated ritual, that moment when all goes silent and the chosen member of the congregation holds a flickering spill to a brand new, untouched candle. In that moment, we are all focused on one simple little dancing flame, a flame that symbolises the coming of our Lord. I grew up watching Blue Peter. My brother and I were both big fans of the show, although sadly we never managed to win a Blue Peter badge. And every year, at around this time, they would show us how to make an advent candle holder. It was a fabulous structure made of metres of tinsel tangled around some wire coat hangers with candles wedged into each corner. An old staple of the programme that you may well be familiar with. Well, we thought it was an ingenious idea, although we never did get around to making our own, possibly due to my mother's very valid concern that we would manage to set the tinsel alight and accidentally start a festive fiery inferno. Nonetheless, Advent candles loom large in my mind when thinking of Christmas tradition. I think it's because of the anticipation, the little wonderful sign that something truly special is coming, the moment of hush as a flame flickers into being, winking and blinking at us as if to say just you wait, wait and see what's going to happen. The Bible tells us of several signs of Jesus coming, moments of anticipation before his great arrival. The one that stands out to me is in Luke chapter 1 verse 41. In this Mary has gone to visit her relative Elizabeth who is pregnant with John the Baptist. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. So in this Advent season, let us remember how truly blessed we are that Jesus came, that Jesus is with us, and that he loves us. And let us be ready for him, waiting in joyful anticipation. And if you'd like to share in a fab festive time with Torch Trust, then our annual Christmas carol service will be on Thursday, 15th December at 2pm. You can tune in from anywhere via our live stream. On YouTube, just search for Torch Trust on video. Or for the Zoom detail, give us a call on 01858 438260 or email info at torchtrust.org. Now, as promised, here is Torch's sight loss friendly church advisor, Lynn Davis, with me to tell us all about a fascinating way to pray. Prayer is a very important thing. I'm, I'm going through quite a difficult situation at the moment. I'm trying to pray about it. And it says in Philippians that we're not meant to be anxious about anything, but to pray about everything and to thank God as well, to be thankful, even though we don't see the answer perhaps straight away. But as we put confidence in him, then actually anxiety begins to go or should begin to go. and We will experience a peace that passes all understanding. Now that's what the Bible talks about. Do you experience that, Lynn, yourself? I wish I experienced it more often than yeah. I do. I think uh, it's something we really have to tap into sometimes. And I, I think we're very much, our minds are extremely powerful. And whether we're conscious of it or not, I think we can decide how we feel a lot of the time. We can't decide what happens to us, but we can decide how it will affect us. 
And sometimes it's easy to decide to feel peaceful and sometimes it's very difficult. Yes, definitely. We do have a choice. We can either let it go or I sort of find I keep putting something into God's hands. Um, he is someone who is, you know, wanting to take responsibility, wanting to work on our behalf, wanting to provide and to give us ideas. But I've heard that you have um, an interesting way of praying that you spoke about at a torch prayer time recently, and I'm very intrigued to hear about it. Right, so let me tell you the story how I first came across this, because it's relevant. So I have been uh, trying to conceive for a few years and it's not happened to me. And I think there are all sorts of reasons and none of them are medical. Um, I think a lot of it is in my head. So I was talking to my counsellor and she was saying to me, um, I have this video that I really need you to watch about prayer code. And I said, okay, and she does not identify as a Christian, by the way, so I was really intrigued with what that was. And so she sent me this video, and the idea behind it is that when you ask God for something, it's already been given to you. So very much when we pray, I think it's very common to pray like, oh dear God, I just wish you would give me a child, I wish you would bless me with a child. Right, so there's nothing wrong with that prayer uh, in and of itself because you are asking God for something and, but it is asking from a place of this thing, which is in my case, my child, isn't, it doesn't exist. Yes, it hasn't right? been, it hasn't been given yet, you It think. hasn't been given and remember what the Bible says, like God knew you from before you were formed in the womb, right? Yeah. So that's, that's one thing. And another thing, another part of this puzzle is to remember that God gives you what you want. So one, one thing that video or what you need. Um, so the video was talking about the, the biblical translation, whatsoever you will ask in my name, you should ask in my name, you shall receive. They were also talking about another Aramaic translation that hadn't been translated properly to Greek because the um, translators weren't aware of how to translate it, but it had been translated in later years. And it said the same thing, but it also said, um, surround yourself with the answer. Ooh. And that brings into mind for me, you know, the modern, uh, you know, how people talk about visualize your success, visualize this. This is how the ancient church prayed. Uh, how, how, do you, how do you know that, by the way, that they, they prayed like that? Have you because, got any? Um, yeah, so that proof was found in the scriptures that they found the original Aramaic translations of, of some of the scriptures that they found that were uncovered later. So so, um, so that particular phrase you used, I love it, surround yourself with the answer, was it? Surround yourself with the answer, be part of the answer. Yes, I love that. There's also an interesting um, reference, I think it might be Mark, Mark 11, where it says, you know, believe that you've received it already, and you will, I'll try and find it in a minute, but it's a very yeah. good, first to back up what you're saying isn't it yes yeah, so it, it it supports exactly that so that's this sort of another reason how do we know that how, that's how the early church prayed uh, and that's we see examples of it all the time so for example it, with um, me praying for for a child and i'm still praying for a child and um, god willing it will happen but it's to kind of be part of the whole thing so i'm not asking god i, I say so th this new way of prayer you start by saying this is a prayer for so i'm going to use the child in my case a baby and i thank you god that you have given me this strong body that is fresh and healthy and can bear a child and i thank you that this child will bring me blessings and abundance and then you can make that list as long as you want. And you see, and then whilst you pray in that way, you visualize what it is that you're praying for. So for me, that would be feeling that bump under my hand. It would be um, the feel of holding that baby, the smell of, new, of a newborn, hearing the little, you know, cries and screams and kind of 
really multi-sensory kind of visualize who is that child, what is that child, what does they feel like, how much do they weigh. And then you end the prayer with, I seal this prayer in truth, faith and trust in Jesus' name. Amen. Right. Well, you know, that's really interesting. As I say, it does seem to fit in with the verses from Mark, very much so, and also with this idea of thanking God. And and that seems very important. You're sealing it in a way by thanking. You're saying, this is what I've asked for, and I believe with all my heart that this is mine, aren't you? Yeah, um, so you're praying, you, you're coming from a place of abundance rather than a place of something that doesn't exist. Yes, here's this verse I've been talking about, Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Well, that's wonderful, isn't go. it? Mark eleven twenty four. that is. Believe that you've received it and what you're doing by surrounding yourself with the answer, you are doing just that, you are as it were, putting your faith fully into the thing that you're praying and, as you say, visualising it. That's an interesting way of building faith. And it can work in so many situations as well. So let's say you pray for rain, for example. You can feel that rain between your toes. Feel what does it sound like on your roof? How mm. does it feel against your skin? You know, and it doesn't have to be big things. It can be little things like... Um, you were talking about your, your, your flooring, for example, <laughs> visualizing your floors being the way that they are. So it, it doesn't have to be a big thing. It, and you don't have to have a long list of gratitudes. It's just that template. You, you, you say what the prayer is for, but you also need to be mindful of the fact that God gives you what you need. He doesn't give you what you want. So you can't be attached to the specific outcome. We'll be hearing more from Lynn very soon. But first, I'd like to share a gift with you. This year, Torch is offering all blind and partially sighted people in the UK a free copy of Reflections from A Handful of Light by Michael Mitten. The Reflections are especially written for Christmas and Advent, and the gift is suitable for committed Christians, those who are just starting to explore the Christian faith, or those whose faith is wavering. To receive your copy, give us a call on 01858 438 260 or email info at torchtrust.org. Let's hear an extract from the book now. We all have our yearnings and longings, and these often find their way into our prayers, crying out to God, to help us, rescue us, provide for us. What this story tells us is that God is listening. He is not a slot machine God. Put the right coins in, pull the lever, and you get the prize. No, God's way of working in our lives is far more personal. There certainly are times when he does answer prayer dramatically. As Zechariah discovered, sometimes the answer is not quite what he was expecting. It was certainly personal, but this answer prayer was going to help not just Zechariah, but a whole community of people. Maybe this is a clue as to how God answers our prayers. Perhaps today's story shows us that God certainly listens to every prayer we ask and compassionately understands the longing of our hearts yet he also always sees us in the context of the human communities in which he has placed us. You may ask for something personal, but the answer may well be for the benefit not just of you, but of the community in which you live, work or worship. A distinctive feature of God's gifts is that they are for sharing. Well, that's a good reminder to go back to my chat with Lynn Davies about prayer. So the outcome might be different is what I'm trying to say. So it might be, for example, that you will get, I will have the child or I will have, maybe I'll have a twins, for example. Mm. I think as humans, we have a kind of idea in our head that this is exactly what it's going to look like. 
and it never looks like that. So, no, so we have to be careful of that, as you say. We have to be careful of that to be too attached to what we think the outcome is going to be. Yeah. Um, I remember I was praying a lot for my dad. He was someone who found it very difficult to believe in in God and anything like that. And he was about to have a serious heart operation. And um, I was praying for him. And in my heart, it was just this impression I got. And I love the way the Holy Spirit can communicate with us, don't you, when we're praying. Mm. Uh, and um, I felt him say, thank me that he's already got faith. He's already, as it were, in my kingdom. And I thought, I can't see that. I can't see it in my heart. But I, it, was, it was sure as anything. Thank him that he's already got it. He's already there. So mm. I started to do that. And there was an amazing way that God showed me it was true. In the end, he died. But he was in a coma for some time. And then a gentleman came to my house and he said um, he was selling floors, actually, selling floors and kitchens and stuff like that, trying to get us to buy stuff. But he was um, a Messianic Jew, and he said when he was in a coma, and he said exactly the same phrase that someone had said about my father, that's when God revealed himself to him, and he right. became a Christian. And I knew that like God had sent this person to visit me not just to sell me something but to actually show me that my prayer had been answered we don't always get that do we that confirmation but it's a wonderful thing when we do it is and also that that is a perfect example as well about being unattached to the outcome so i don't know maybe in your head you would have been thinking that you would have experienced your dad's change of faith but exactly. you didn't experience that firsthand no i didn't and that was what threw me in a way because I guess I was attached to the outcome more than I should have been. But, you know, I so wanted to know that he had come to faith. And God was very gracious to me by sending that man along. And this very phrase that people had been using on my dad, he used it and, and showed me, in a way, the outcome of that. So I, I found that rather incredible. It excites us, doesn't it, when we think about prayer like this? I think it's a very exciting way of thinking about prayer. The thing that I love about what you're saying is this idea of really feeling like if the rain, if you're praying for rain, to feel the rain, to imagine it, it kind of helps you to connect with what you're praying for. I like that idea. On the other hand, there are um, cults and different things today that talk about creating your own reality. We have to create that reality from the truth we know from the Bible, don't we? like that God is good and that God wants to give us what we need, not always what we want. And sometimes we can link our prayers to specific promises, you know, in the Bible to do with, say, a subject that we're praying about. It's great, isn't it? You know, that when we base our thoughts upon what God is saying and upon his love and the fact that he wants to provide, fantastic. Yeah. I love it. Well, I think you've really excited me. I'm going to be praying perhaps in a new way for my particular situation. We talked about my flooring. I certainly <laughs> need it doing. And at the moment, it's all delayed because of COVID. Um, I need to sort of imagine some nice lino under my feet, I think. Anyway, lovely to chat to you. I think you've really got us all thinking. And we'd like to know what our listeners are thinking about it, wouldn't we? So um, thank you so much, Lynn. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. We're about out of time for today, but if you'd like to find out more about anything Torch offers, including how to receive your free copy of Reflections from a Handful of Light, then please do get in touch. We love to hear from our listeners, and actually, we'd love to hear how you pray. The number to call is 01858 438 260. You can email us on info at torchtrust.org or you can find us on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. Just search for Torch Trust. Until next week, from me, Marilyn and everyone on the Reflections team, goodbye and God bless. You've been listening to Reflections from Torch Trust.